welcome to the Gordon Current Science and Technology Center here at the museum. My name is Alex, and for the next 20 minutes or so, I'm going to be talking about this stuff called nano silver. Nano silver just really isn't something that gets a lot of attention these days. There's no, no nano silver on TV really very often, or nano silver in the newspapers. But actually, I think it's kind of funny that nano silver doesn't get more attention. And really, the reason is that nano silver is popping up in all kinds of places in our lives. Um, so I, I brought a bunch of examples of that with me here to the museum today. Um, and so those are all these products right here. These are all products that are somehow made with or somehow use this stuff, nano silver. Uh, so we've got a drink. This is a dietary supplement that tells you to drink a few teaspoons a day of nano silver water. We've got some socks. And believe it or not, this is one of the most common nano silver products you'll find, socks embedded with nano silver. Uh, along the same lines, we've also got this, which is really my favorite. This is Benny, and Benny is also embedded with nano silver. And to round things off, we've got a spray for your hands, um, which says it's scientifically proven, but actually leaves a little bit of mystery as to exactly what it's scientifically proven to do. Um, and we've got a food container that's coated with nano silver and a hair dryer, which is blowing nano silver on me as we speak. So we've got all these sort of random household products that are all made with nano silver. And actually, these things that I have with me here today are really just the tip of the iceberg. There are hundreds more nano silver products out there. Things like nano silver toothpaste, nano silver pants, a nano silver baby pacifier, and a washing machine. This is a nano silver washing machine. So we've got all these sort of all over the place products here, and this sort of begs two questions. One, what is this stuff nano silver, which I haven't really made clear yet? And two, what is it doing in a bear and a hair dryer and some food storage containers? Um, and so we'll get to both of those questions today, but I'm going to start with the first one this question of what is nano silver? And the simplest way that I can explain that to you is just to say that nano silver is silver. This seems uh, incredibly obvious, but it's true. It's the same material you'll find in silver coins and silver jewelry and things like that. And silver itself really doesn't seem all that new or exciting. Silver has been around for quite a long time, actually, and people have been making things out of it for a long time. So this brings me to a part of the presentation that I like to call Silver Through the Ages. <laughs> And so what this is, is I did a little bit of research, and I looked back, and I found products that people had made throughout history was from silver. And the oldest one that I could find was this. It may not look like it's in too good shape anymore, but this is a bowl, a silver bowl made almost 3,000 years ago by some people called the Phoenicians. And then later on, the Romans also made things out of silver, and one of the things they made was this, a silver cup. And in our own day and age, and more recent history, if we take another big leap forward in time, we see a lot of silver products that look like this, forks and spoons and things. So I want you all to do me a favor and just look at these products, and remember that they were made by completely different people in different civilizations and times, and just try to tell me what all these silver products have in common. Take a careful look. There are a couple of possible answers here. Does anyone have any ideas? What do these things have in common? What do you think? They all touch things you ingest. It's a very specific thing. That's right. These, these are all objects you might see around the dinner table, right? We've got a bowl, a cup, and some forks and spoons. So that's kind of funny. Why would this metal, silver, be used so much around food and drink? And there's no way I can answer this question with 100% confidence. but. A lot of people believe that this pattern, this pattern of silver being used around food, has to do with a very unique and special property of silver. And that is that silver kills germs. Uh, so it might be, might be a surprise to some of you. It's not something you hear about very often, but it's true. Silver is very, very toxic to bacteria and some fungi and viruses. And so the idea is by using silver around their food, people were able to keep their food fresh for longer. This is an idea that, that continues today with things like this. So that's silver, and this is silver through the ages. But this doesn't really answer our question of what is nano silver. Why is it that all these products brag about having nano silver in their product? Uh, so does anyone know that term nano or nanotechnology? 
Uh, what do you what do you guys think? Sure, very, very small, microscopic. When we're talking about things that are nano, we're talking about things that are really, really small. And so logically, nano silver is just pieces of silver that are really, really small. It's as simple as that. Um, so this is an image I have of some nano silver. It's just clumps of silver that are a few nanometers across. Um, so I'm saying this is small, but it may not be totally clear just how small. Uh, small can mean different things to different people. And so here, we're talking about things that we're measuring in billionths of a meter, or nanometers. Um, and so that's, that's about a billionth of this, which is really small, almost too small to imagine. So we can think of this in a couple other ways. One is that a nanometer is about the length that your fingernail will grow between now and now, you know, which is very, very small. Or if you were to pull one hair from your head, on average, the thickness of a hair is about 100,000 nanometers. And we're talking about pieces of silver that are about 15 nanometers, or maybe a little bigger, maybe a little smaller, but on this same size scale. And so I guess that's, that's a little bit interesting, right, that people want to make things that are that small. But the real question here is why? Why would you want your silver to be in such tiny pieces? And to answer that question, we're going to actually jump over to a different material. I'm sure this is the part of the presentation you've all been waiting for. Um, I'm going to look at iron over here. And so I'm going to move these things to safety over here. Um, but I have on your left one piece of iron. It's an iron bolt. And on your right, I have an iron powder. It's the same amount of iron on both sides, and it's the same material. But as you'll see, the size, the difference in size between uh, different, different particles makes a big difference in how they react. Um, so I'd actually like you all to give me a little countdown here. We're going to start at 5 and go down, and I'm going to drop these in, and we'll see what happens, OK? So here we go. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Here we go. <laughs> so as you can see, there's a big difference in how these things are reacting. On the left, not really much is happening at all with our big piece of iron. And on the right, we've got quite a reaction going with our little pieces of iron. So this is something that's true in a lot of chemistry. Little pieces react quickly. So silver had, does the same thing. If you break it into small pieces, it reacts fast. The effect of that, really what that does to help us, is that it means silver kills germs faster and more efficiently. Um, so we keep coming back to this idea of germs. This is a picture taken with a very powerful electron microscope of E. coli bacteria. But you might also think of germs as something like this. Little monsters crawling all over the place, getting into trouble. And so we, we sort of set up this battle of us against germs, right? Germs are bad. We never want to touch them. We, we never want to sort of come into contact with them. We want to kill them all. And I, I, I hate to break the news to you, but unfortunately, if you're setting up a battle of you against bacteria, it is not a battle that you are going to win. Bacteria is very, very good at surviving. And no matter how much I clean my apartment, I really can't go more than a few minutes without touching bacteria. In fact, we can't even get away from bacteria inside our own bodies. It turns out that in your body, there are actually more bacterial cells than there are human cells. There's, there's more bacteria in you than you in you, at least in terms of number, which is maybe a little gross and creepy to think about, but it turns out it's not such a bad thing. These bacteria help you, most of them, in your body. A lot of them are in your gut, and they help you break down foods and produce vitamins for your body. More generally, we can think of us and bacteria as living in, in harmony, in a balance of life. 